We are live. Alright guys, I'm Joe. And I'm Raven. And this is our Star Wars podcast, A Sith Temple. Now just more. I find your lack of faith disturbing. You're reckless, little one. You never would have made it as Obi-Wan's Padawan. So... How are we gonna start this? How are we gonna start this is, is the real question. Um, basically, first of all, I just wanna tell you guys, like, me and Raven, huge Star Wars fans, you know, like, from the day we got into Star Wars, there's been no turning back. We love it, and that's how this podcast has started. Um, we talk about Star Wars every day, all day, and now we just wanna share it with you guys. So, this is gonna be the very first episode of the Sith Temple. Um, how the show is gonna run is we're gonna usually we're gonna come in, we'll do the news, and then we'll move on to our main topic. Today our main topic is gonna be just letting you guys know more about us. And by doing that, we've got five questions pre 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 prepared questions that I haven't seen and that Raven hasn't seen mine. We're gonna ask each other's questions. We're also going to answer our own questions just to give you guys a better, a deeper knowledge into what how we feel about Star Wars and some of our thoughts on it. And that's about it. Like that's how it's going to run. First episode. Super excited. How are you feeling right now? You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I feel like I've been ready for this. I feel like I've been. I feel like I've been doing this podcast my whole life. Good, good, good. The question is, are you ready for what we're about to give you? <laughs> Alright, so we're going to jump straight into the news. Alright, three items of news that are worth talking about this week. More updates to the Star Wars celebration schedule. Yep, um, they've added a few more guests to, to the panel. Uh, mainly, uh, I believe it's towards the closing, as before we only had two. Um, so now, I think... As we're getting closer to date, they know this. You know they're giving us these little, little bonuses. You know to get us extra pumped. I'm already pumped as it is. Yeah, super. So, super. Um, I mean, it's just it's just good stuff for us. Yeah, I mean, I just think well, that. Forward to it. Last Friday they dropped on us like the majority of the panel. This was like a lightsaber to the. It's like losing an arm. I felt like, I felt like Luke, <laughs> when Vader took his arm. Like they, it was intense. It was intense, so they dropped that on us, and I thought that was going to be the end of it, but it wasn't. So I think, like you just said, they're going to keep dropping. Oh, this person's still coming, and this person's—they're going to pack that weekend out. Like this is Star Wars Celebration Europe. This is it's about to be on on the next level. Shut down. Yeah. Completely shut down. And in case you haven't watched our previous podcast, okay, go back to our previous video. We covered it all. Um, there and, will be a link in the description for that, so just go down there and click on it and you can check out our Star Wars panel. That's it. So what have we got next? Alright, uh, next is new pictures of Rogue One came out. So Rogue One, a Star Wars stories is dropping in December and uh, Entertainment Weekly drops some new pictures. Have you seen them? What do you think? Nope, uh, I have not seen any of them simply because unless it's coming straight to me, I haven't, I'm too busy preparing for Star Wars Celebration. We have less than two weeks to go. Less than two weeks. I know, I know. Do I know. you think I care about some pictures? It's pretty, <laughs> it's, it's, nah, I totally understand. I saw the pictures and I can't, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I've seen the pictures, the pictures are great. The nice pictures of Stormtroopers on a beach. On, on a beach. On a beach. Imperials on Star Destroyers and stuff like that. But like, with Star Wars Celebration being like 14 days away, I just can't really get excited for some pictures. I can't. So, sorry guys, just on our side of the world right now, nobody cares. Nobody cares about these pictures. They're cool, but yeah. I'm gonna be with Kathleen Kennedy next week. So, let's just put that into perspective. Man don't care about all that. In, I know, in the words of Jeremy. Man, don't care about all that. Yeah. All right. So, last topic, um, last news item. Forrest Whitaker's character in Rogue One is been named as Sol Guerrero. Uh, he was a supporting character in a few episodes of the Clone Wars. 
in a season. Just I can't remember what season it was, but he was in there. Yeah, I think it's just too much to try to remember, especially with Rebels. You know, kind of clouds, you know, your memory. The dark side um, does that. I remember it vaguely. I, I know he, you know he worked with with, with the the Jedi's. Um, he was a bit of an extremist, no? Yeah. So basically, his character, he he worked for a rebel cell, and like they kind of threw away, they kind of threw around some terms like terrorist and that. He was a bit of an extremist. Like he mm. he he sometimes went past the bar, but at the same time, I think it's cool. I think it's cool they've added him in. I think what they've probably done is watched the movie or Rogue One or they're putting the movie together and realised that this character who Forrest Whitaker plays is exactly like a character that they've already got back in the library. Right. And I think it's just a wink and a nod to hardcore Star Wars fans like, see that guy from Clone Wars? Nudge, nudge. He's in this. Like, I don't think they're going to be doing that with main huge characters like they've, that got created in Clone Wars. But I think... These side supporting characters, it doesn't matter whether they live or die, no one's going to remember him, so Which, just throw him in there. It, you know, and, and that's, that's actually pretty good that they're doing that, because it kind of makes us wonder, are we going to get like a clone, a clone movie, you know, where it just covers the clones, because Clone Wars is pretty deep, like, just going in how, how they are. See, I totally understand what you're saying, it's like... With them including a character from the Clone Wars, or maybe some characters from Rebels, it opens the door to a whole bunch of different stories. But my, where my reservation with it is, I don't know if they if they can just do that. I think it depends on Rogue One. Like if Rogue One does well with a whole bunch of characters that no one's ever met before, then it opens the door to it. But if if Rogue One doesn't do well, they're gonna be like, oh wait, wait, wait. We can only make movies of characters they know. More Han Solo, do you know what I'm saying? More Obi Wan, do you know what I'm saying? If if Rogue One, that story with brand new characters does well, they'll do other movies with characters that you'll never. Maybe we'll get a Cad Bane movie. Cad, you just maybe you just we'll say get a Cad Bane, Bane movie. That would probably too much. I think that'll be too Shout much. out to all the assassins and bounty hunters out there. Sheesh. We love you, Cad Bane. <laughs> all right, all right, moving on. All right, moving on. Let's get to our main topic: a Sith discussion. So, I got my five questions. Have you got your five questions? Yeah, and I think it's it's about it's about to be super peak right now. Um, I'm gonna start this off. Go on. First question, nice and simple, mm. easy question. Mm. Who is your favorite Sith character and why? Darth Maul. And there's a few. F let me oh, let me start off. Darth Maul, like this is. It's, 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 it's deep. It's, it's deep. deep like it's that. It's deep. deep like that because before Vader, there's Darth Maul. Let it sink in. And I'm gonna repeat that. Before Vader, there was Maul, right? I don't think we've seen anyone with as much hate and survival like just being a survivor man got chopped in half still survived still held on to something dear to him that kept him alive and not just that he goes he's, he's in, this, in, in, in certain position where now he's not about the, the, the sieves the Jedi's, he has his own cause, which to me is something big among Siths. Let me not try to get into much into the comic side of it. Take it where you <laughs> take it where you need to take it. Right. Take it where you need to take it. Right. So Siths have their own battles amongst themselves. Okay. So and Maul is at the top. Alright, so to me, Maul is, is, is that guy. Let me dive in. Let me dive in. I like Darth Maul. Now, let me tell you how my feelings toward Darth Maul were. Like, I watched episode one and I thought, that's a cool character. Gets killed at the end of the movie, boom, never see him again, whatever. Did he get killed though? Obviously not, because he comes back in Clone Wars. Now, my... 
My interest in Maul <laughs> came when he returned in Clone Wars because it was something I never thought would happen. Like, that they'd bring him back from the dead. But Which is something common amongst the... It is stuff. something. So, when I saw the struggle he went through, because they deep, they dive deep into his history in Clone Wars, uh, from where he came from, how he got taken away from his his planet, and how the the men on his on his planet are See, the I'm weakest thinking are the, about are, are, are the weaker species, <laughs> and um, and how he got trained and all this other stuff. And then I've seen the tribulations he went through. Spoilers if you haven't watched Clone Wars or anything else like that. Like that what he goes off and does and who, like just it's savagery like he like you said it survivor Darth Maul and that's why I respect his character because he was whole, totally redeemed from what happened to him in episode one and to me he's he's one of those strong pivotal characters I only hope that he shows up in a movie at some point I secretly, any particular movie secretly like deep down in my soul I need there to be an Obi-Wan Kenobi trilogy where it's just him and Darth Maul, Go and they the have to settle the beef they've had they since from they day one. To. They have to. From day one. They have to. Darth Maul killed Qui Gon Jinn, Obi Wan's master. Darth Maul killed Obi Wan's <laughs> friend, <laughs> his female companion. Come on, it's At, too much. Yo, it's too much. Obi Wan cut him in half. Those those five years he was in that pit, all he worried about was Obi Wan. That was the only that was the only, that was the that only was on name he could say when he got found was Kenobi. Now, if that isn't setting up something, I don't know what is. But all right, this is it. Let's let's move on. Let me just throw mine in there. All right, okay. so my Sith character for me it's a no-brainer. Darth Vader. <sighs> Darth Vader, like. First of all, Darth Vader's that guy. Like, who it is? Like, you know when someone walks into the party and the music stops? That's Vader every time. Like, when he walks into the toilet, the music when stops. When he breathes. When he. That's it. That's all, that's all you need. You don't even need to see him. You just hit. But. And my, it's just. <laughs> my interest in Vader goes deeper than him just being, like, you know, the baddest, the baddest Sith out there. It's like. I think. The reason Darth Vader to me is everything is because in the beginning, he was supposed to be something else. Right. When they found him, when they found young Anakin, he was supposed to be the chosen one. He was supposed to be the one to bring balance to the force. And through his life, he has to have the biggest swing in character from going from a little kid who just wants to free his mom, he just wants to help, and all that to this yeah, he goes, person. He goes through a massive, a massive story arc. Yeah, and he goes through he goes through trials and tribulations and and test after test after test until it it breaks it him. Breaks him. It breaks him. He turns, and then when he turns, he is the baddest mole on the planet in the universe <laughs> in the galaxy. The thing that they said that he was supposed to do, which was bring balance to the force, he does the opposite of that. He shuts down he completely changed the, the the universe the whole universe he goes from supposed to save the jedi order to almost wiping it off the face of the galaxy and and just that story arc and then him coming back to the light with luke because of his son and stuff like that the fuel like that is just a that's the kind of compelling story arc that i can't ignore see to me to me um the main thing about darth vader is anakin Right, just what he goes through, like you said, the, the trials and tribulations, what he goes through, but the position that is in being a Jedi, being influenced by Palpatine differently. If you don't know about Palpatine, <laughs> you I don't know what you yeah, need to do tough, with your life, but one. think about it, he's in, he's in between and he's confused. Jedi's are supposed to be peacekeepers. Peacekeepers. Yet they're meddling in battles. So it's it's very confusing for him. And I just loved his turning point. His his anger, his rage. 
And when he's in that room with those little younglings, sheesh. See, the thing for me is, it's, it, it's tough because he's on a side what he thinks is the right side. Right. And one thing that I think that always gets overlooked in in the prequels is that the Jedi are wrong. Through all three movies, they're wrong. They say they're peacekeepers, but like you said, they're in they're deeply involved, heavily invested in the Clone Wars. They're in denial that they are. Exactly. Yeah. Palpatine is leading them. Yoda, through the movie, says I'm clouded, I don't know what I'm doing. He says that. This is the 900 year old Jedi, the leader of the Jedi Order, saying he's confused and doesn't know what's going on. That's when you should probably take a seat and step back. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's the Jedi's fault. I, I, I actually blame the Jedi for everything. They let their LeBron James, they let their number one star pupils go off and run around with Palpatine as his right hand man. <laughs> and then try to use him as a spy. And. Like, you're supposed to be something pure, but you want to be there as a spy. Nah. Let's not, let's not, even, <laughs> let's not nah. even go there. We need a whole episode just to talk about how the Jedi have messed up, like, everything. Like, how they... Jedi scum. <laughs> how they ended up erasing themselves from history. For sure. uh, but what is your first question for me? See, I'm going to dive in straight. I'm not trying to give you any... <laughs> any nice, any easy No ride. life jacket. What is your main turning point in Star Wars? In everything that you've you've seen, where is the point where you're like, what just happened? Like, what is the turning point for you? Man, that is tough. Do you know what, yeah? It's early. What, see, I've got two. Okay. I've got two. And it's hard because if the prequels came out before episodes four, five, and six, then I maybe have one. Because but you know how the way they came out, it makes me have two. So Alderon getting blown up. <laughs> RIP Alderon. RIP. Now that was some real stuff. Like I can't even remember like being how old I was, and I'm watching, and then they blew up the planet. And I looked around like, that was a planet. Go on. They just, they blew up a planet. Like that doesn't happen, in, it, like that doesn't happen. Like, what do you watch? Like, when Star Wars came out, like what around them days, just with, they just annihilated a planet. That's when I was like, this is real, like, this is real, like, that was, like, I can't even talk about it, like, they took yeah, the princess and said, yo, tell us what we want to know, oh, you see your whole planet, right, I'm, we're going to blow it up, then she tells them, and then they blow it up, now, if that's not a dick move, like, I don't know what is, so that was what, that was one of the points when I was like, raw, this is real, like, this, this stuff here is serious, but then another point is, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. Obi-Wan versus Anakin Skywalker. And I hate how they got to this point, but I love the point that they got to, where Obi-Wan is standing on the high ground and Anakin says, you don't know how powerful I am. And he tries to jump over him. And Obi-Wan slices both his legs off and an arm. And he's crawling in the, on, in the dirt. And then the lava kind of gets onto him and he's burning. He's burning and crawling towards Obi-Wan and screaming, I hate you. And his eyes, you see the, you see the hate, you see the hate swell up in his eyes and you see the turn. Like that is the, that right there. Even though they did the bit with him kneeling down and Palpatine saying, oh, I know you, Lord Vader. That's not when Vader was made. That... That right there, him crawling in that dirt, that's when Vader was made. That, to me, is like my biggest point in Star Wars. Like, that is just, that is just a scene, like. You, I, you. I'm sorry, See, I had to have two. I had to get two. That's, that's so, cool. That's, that's super cool because what you've just explained, 
that particular bit, that would be, that's one of my, my ones as well, because, like I said, you, you were supposed to be my brother, and, there's nothing I can add to what you just said, now, see, Star Wars is so big, it's hard, and this is exactly what I wanted, to, and, and I'm glad you threw more than one, because, then I'll probably have to come, come to your neck like that, but, it's just been so many times, where there's been a, a turning point. Vader, Anakin did that about three times, if not more. Yeah. Um, but without going to those main main guys, the one I would add to it was when Ahsoka Tano. I see, I see the look in your eye. I see the look in your eye. I just want you to finish the sentence so I can give you a, a round of applause. When when. She was betrayed by the Jedi Council. See, <laughs> when you asked me the question, when you asked me the question, my mind just went straight to the movies. By the way, that was kind of like a setup, but yeah, that's, that's cool. But you go ahead, go but ahead. It's, it's, go ahead. But that's how big it is, you know. And this is why, you know, when when we talk about Clone Wars or Rebels. And a lot of feedback that sometimes you get is that, oh, it's, it's cartoons. No, it's still the movie and it's, it gets deeper like that. The, the thing is, yeah, one thing that is funny to me about this whole, oh, I can't watch Clone Wars, I can't watch Rebels, it's a cartoon, is it's that. That just tells me that those people aren't really invested in, in the story of Star Wars right. and lore because the, the, the things that transpire in these shows, it's... It's, it's different. Deep. It's deep. It's deep, and, and that that whole them betraying Ahsoka, like the politics, it just leads more into my point that the Jedi don't know what they're doing. Right. They're confused. They they have been manipulated. They they were manipulated for like a gen for like a decade, for like a decade. That chess, chess baby. We're playing chess. chess. Yeah. They get moved around like pawns and pieces. And 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 speaking of pawns and pieces. Palpatine. I hold Palpatine the highest. Without lifting up a lightsaber, he <coughs> he defeated the Jedi. But anyway, but going back, I'm just I just wanted to throw out there because obviously you mentioned that. But and to add even to Ahsoka, I loved how when they took her back, she didn't stay. Could she have stayed? There's no way. The thing that you believe in, with your whole heart, betrays you. And then they come back and they say, oh, we're sorry. Like, it's, no. Everything she believed in, turned their back on her. Right. You know what I'm saying? Except for Anakin, and look where Anakin ends up. And look where Ahsoka and Vader are at right now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, she but even, even then, like, they kind of pushed those two to be in that situation. Because obviously, ex Anakin, being the situation that he's in, because obviously um, she's she's the young Padawan. Yeah. Like, obviously he he has the responsibility, so he's again he's in conflict. The thing is, I I see Ahsoka and Vader story very similar because they are both betrayed right by the Jedi. But take very different routes. Ahsoka says, I'm going to go off and just be me and be a grey Jedi as they're known. Yep. No affiliation to the Jedi, but you do fight for what's right. And, still use the and Vader went to, I'm in the dark side now. Right. They both left the Jedi Order and, and, and I want to see how, this, how that conflict ends. Let's move on. <laughs> Alright, because we're only at question two. We're about to be here for like six hours. I know. Alright, so my second question. Flipping my first question on his head, <clears throat> who's your favourite Jedi and why? See, I just mentioned Ahsoka. Uh, and I'm going to go with Ahsoka Tano simply because she was raised by Anakin. So a lot of traits, you know, she's, she's a rebel. You know, she, you know, they might tell her, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, but she still does it. So did Anakin. So a lot of the traits she has, 
is from Anakin. So, Loki, Vader, Anakin, my Jedi, Loki is the apprentice of, of Darth Vader. Alright, yeah. Alright, so let me jump onto mine. Mine is. Mine's Obi Wan Kenobi. Nah. Obi Wan Kenobi is just. He's. He's the one. I think he's the one constant through the whole Star Wars. Like, he's the guy who's been there through the beginning. When he was when he was a young Jedi, when he was a Paddy one, he saw he saw what has happened to the Jedi, to the Jedi Order, and he went from looking after Anakin to killing the Anakin. Yep. Because he had to. Yep. Because he had to, and then having to remove himself from the Jedi as it crumbled and then taking on the task of looking off, looking over a young Luke Skywalker as he grew up and then showing Luke the way. While that's his main story arc, him being the master of Luke, it's the little bits inside, it's the, his conflicts with Maul. It's him staying good even though everyone around him turns bad. That's the kind of stuff that, that I think makes Obi-Wan just like, one of the one of the best Jedi's like to me he is the best Jedi. Um, you know, Scrap Yoda. Um, he's you know he's up there. And what I really look forward to him is now how uh, the the, the spin-off for Force Awakens is going to be now that he's involved, you know, appearing at the end. And yeah man, I just I just wanted I just wanted to see how that's his story is going to play out and what happened in between yeah. for him to be isolated elsewhere, you know? Um, but yeah, he's is, is that guy. All right, what's your question? Um, if you could add a story to the cinematic world, uh, what would it be? So, let me, let me clarify. If you could add a, a character story to Star Wars, who would it be? See, this is this is tough. Like, ten names just jumped into my head, but I think there's two that I'd have to pick. And the first one would be Obi Wan Kenobi, yeah. <laughs> the Lost Years. Ooh, I like that. The Lost Years. That's big. Because I need to know what happened in between Episode Three and Episode Four. Like, there's there's too much space there. They say Obi-Wan was just on Tatooine looking over Luke, but I know he must have left the planet. He must have went to go help out Jedi's who needed help. He must have, I think he, I, he must have confronted Maul some more. Like, there's so much time there, and I just know Obi-Wan weren't just at home, like, getting fat. I, like, I know we weren't doing that. <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty deep, because we do, we do get uh, spells in Clone Wars of side relationships he had yeah so for example um i can't remember her name she's a princess in that's that's that's, that's, that's just satine right there you go they had the romantic well they allude to a, a, a romantic attachment of some you know sort I mean? so who's to say he doesn't have kids see that's the thing if you watch Clone Wars or Rebels or stuff like this, you pick up these things, these little storylines that they just throw out there. Right. And then never say anything about. And it's like, so, so what was Obi-Wan doing? Right. Like, what was it like? What is going on? Like, these are things that I need to know. And I think if they did, it doesn't even have to be a movie. If they did a video game, Pete this, they do a video game like Tomb Raider, I'm you're doing, you're doing too much right now. And it stars Obi Wan, and it just fills in a year. It fills in one year of of what he did um, while he was on Tatooine, or a mission when he left Tatooine. I, that's all I need. It doesn't have to be a movie, video yeah, game. I'm video up. Game. I'm up for it. Let's let's throw that to EA, shall we? Let's hope so. Hope so. Hope so, hopefully it's got a story mode, unlike Battlefront. Sheesh. Shots fired. Blah blah blah. All right. Uh, and my second one, I know I'm cheating, I'm still picking two. But my second character is probably someone that you don't... A lot of people won't know who he is because they don't watch Clone Wars, but if you think Boba Fett is the best assassin in the galaxy, <laughs> you are wrong. This character won't be falling in any Sarlacc pits and getting killed. 
Um, Damn. Cad Bane. Bane. Now, Cad Bane is an old school assassin. He is like, he's like Billy the Kid. Like he's a, he's, he's like pulled out of westerns. He's got the cowboy hat, he's got the toothpick, and he, like, he's ready to go. All, all he needs is some Imperial credits and he's good to go. Indeed, like, indeed. I love Cad Bane. Like, whenever he shows up in the Clone Wars, you know you're about to have like a legit episode. Like, this episode just got better because Cad Bane fit. Like, you just know it. That's it. Like, I love, I just love that guy. <laughs> he's got no allegiances. True. True. So he, do you know? True. He could get employed. He got the credits. Yeah, you there. go. He could be doing anything. I'd like to see him in the in the in the dirty underworld of like him just having to assassinate people. Like you seen that movie Dread, three D. Yeah. If you do that, but with Cad Bane, <laughs> stop it. Uh, it's take it's, my money. Take my whole wallet. Nah, you don't, you don't need the money because we we got the limited anyway. So you we're in there. there. Shout we're out to Cineworld. Cineworld. Team Unlimited. Um, just one question. Um, I like how you threw. Um, Boba Fett from the top of the top down in your hand. Right. What is to say that Boba Fett is actually Boba Fett inside that helmet? Because you see, my theory is is that it can just be the next James Bond. Like you get killed, whoever gets hold of that, or whoever kills you, it gets the mantle, gets the job. It's like Batman, like, it's not the man, it's the symbol. Right. I 100% feel that. Like, to me personally, if that's Boba Fett, that makes, that makes him more interesting to me. Because this whole, oh, I fell in, I fell in the side like pit, oh, I climbed out, I'm still the baddest man on the planet. No, nah, G, no you're not. You fell in the side like pit for like 10 years, no. I would be more excited if like, he died in the Sarlacc pit, someone killed the Sarlacc, however many years later, found the uniform and knew what it was, and put it on and then he started getting all the major contracts, and then he gets killed and someone else takes it. That then, then you can do movies like, with a new actor, playing Boba Fett, every movie, like it's literally like James Bond, it's his right. own franchise, like, that there would be amazing, like, that makes Boba Fett more interesting to me. That's cool. This whole baby Django fit story that it got going on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't write it. I don't mean. You're a clone. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm icy for that. Tube test, yeah? Yeah. That's, no. what, they, that's what they're on, tube test. Um, my, my first pick, I would also say Cad Bane. Okay? Uh, but let me dive a little bit deeper. Let me carve it up with the lightsaber. I know I'm too much with, with the dark side, but these are the little things that it interests me how certain characters got to where they were and how they function, right? Sidious, young Sidious, right? We know, or well, we presume we know, that he killed his master, Darth Plagueis, right? Yeah. So I want to see those two. The rule of two. I want to see how. You're a bad man. You're a. <laughs> you're a bad man. Go ahead. Let it, go ahead. Like the rules, the way you're thinking. Because let's be honest, I don't think I've ever seen or we've ever seen a defeat like that. Ever. Yeah. I mean, Vader killing Palpatine is that defeat. But I, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. That's big time. Yeah. That's big time. But the reason I like your, where you're coming from is because Vader beating Palpatine is the chosen one fulfilling his destiny. I want to see, Palpatine's not the chosen one. So for him to beat someone like Darth Plagueis, yo. Yo, let me add to that. Let me add to that. Because the rule of a Sith is that if you're my master and I turn out to be better than you, it is okay for me to ex you. And everybody else will follow. So if Blagis did that to his master, it's okay. That's how we roll. Yeah. Then Vader comes through, through his master train, gets better, takes him out. So these are the kind of stuff that we don't get on TV. So unless you're invested in the comics, 
or the novels, you don't know these things. So I would like to see more around those two guys and obviously the Sith as well. No, I love, like Sidious is one of those characters to me that is like, he's at the top of the food chain and never gets enough credit. Do you know what I'm saying? Because he's been pulling strings from, from birth. <laughs> he came out of the womb pulling strings like, yo, he might have made chess. <laughs> he might, he might have. have made chess. He might as well have. Yeah, because he's beating everyone. He's beating everyone for, for decades. And he's just, like I said, I don't think he ever gets enough credit, but he's one of those amazing uh, characters. I'd love to see a younger, a younger uh, Sidious coming up with Plagueis, definitely. Um, this is just going to roll easily into our next question. So, who are, who is your favourite character who is not a Force user? Has no force powers at all. Man, I feel I feel we're going to kind of repeat ourselves, but Cat Bane, most likely Cat Bane. The way he just he, he rolls and he gets things done for a non, you know, force user is pretty effective. You know, I, I just like his attitude. You know, his little, his, his little swagger, you know, when he comes through and he gets things done or whether he wins or loses, to me, he always feels like it's not really a loss. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, no matter whatever he gets his target or not, it's like he came out on top. Like, And if you think about it, how many people will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Jedi? Toe-to-toe, -to -toe, right, with, with one of the top guys and still not get captured. No, I feel you on that. Like, like I said, Cad Bane was one of my choices for who I'd like to see stories of. So he he's big time to me. My pick though is I'm not gonna go Cad Bane because we've already we're, spoke we're, about yeah, we already spoke about Cad Bane. Too much. I think this one is a bit. This one's a bit easy. It's got to be the late, the great Han Solo. Nah. I'm, I was never really a big fan of Han Solo. I'm like, not, I, I, I understand, Solo. I understand why people like this guy. Right. But to me, like, he's, he's like the Batman. When when I watch, when I go back and I watch um, episode four, five, six, and maybe now seven, this guy is like, besides him being a scoundrel and all this other stuff, and him shooting first, like he's hilarious. Like yeah, that is, he that's... is a he's just funny, like. Whenever you need a moment, like whenever Star Wars ever got too serious, there was Han Solo ready to just bring you guys back. Just to, guys, I'm here. Like, yeah, like, I'm, like he, like he's a great character, and it's like, I'm, like I said, I'm not his biggest fan, but I'm really excited for his movie because I want to see. I just want to see more about him. Like I feel like when I'm watching Han Solo, it's like I can relax a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. all right, we don't have to be so serious right now. It's not all Darth Vader force choking people, Han Solo's gonna tell us a joke and he's gonna do something stupid or Princess Leia's gonna tell him to shut up. I love the banter between him and Chewie. Yeah. And you don't understand Chewie, but how, yeah. how do you get that? That's the thing, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, like, Han Solo, like, he's got qualities, just the, the stuff around him makes him a great character, like, especially, I'm glad you brought up Chewbacca, like, because I don't, there's not many movies that do that and I think Star Wars is amazing for doing it, for having characters that you don't understand but you know exactly what they say every time. Right. And Han Solo is the interpreter for, che for Chewie. Yeah. His responses always tells you what Chewie says. Like, I loved in The Force Awakens when uh, Han Solo's being caught by the two gangs, he's in between them and he's like trying to get, swindle his way out of it and he's like, yo, like, what, what did I do? He's like, and he tells Chewie, I always talk my way out of it and Chewie's like, Aah. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and they start arguing, and I was just like, yo, that is vintage Han Solo. Like, I love that, man. That's why. I and it just shows how long they've been together. Exactly. You have so long that it's like, you always get me into this situation. Why am I still with like, you? Exactly. Sort of like, why am I here? Is this life that this bad? Like, do I do I need this? Like, so that's why I'm gonna pick Han Solo. I had to, I had to brighten it up. That's, we that's was, cool. We that's was getting cool. super dark. Super dark. Well, it is, dark. it is, you know, the Malakor Temple. So. Boy, that's, that's, that's where the levels takes us. Alright, uh, is this it, your question? Is it me now? I think it's your fourth question. Or is it your third? It's my third. Third, there you go. What is your theory behind Snoke? Wow! 
you went in with these questions. You did. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, it's like I've had a million theories yeah, behind there's who so many. Snoke is. What? Who I really wanted him to be was I wanted him to be Darth Plagueis. I wanted him to be. What I wanted to happen was that in episode three, mm. Palpatine's talking to Anakin and he says. My master knew how to bring people back from the dead, but I killed him. Mm -hmm. Now, it is just a Star Wars thing to do for Palpatine to believe he killed his master, but his master isn't dead. His master has been away for 60 years or whatever, recuperating from the, the ass whooping that, that Palpatine gave to him. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And then he comes back and he's like, yo, look, I'm decrepit. I can't do it myself. I gotta get these, like, I gotta get a, a Sith army. So that's why he gets Kylo Ren right. and the Knights of Ren. And he's trying to get all of these guys together to like just obliterate everything that was the foot that was from the past. Do you know what I'm saying? I wanna take out Luke, I wanna just end this thing. That's what I wanted it to be, but And to add to that, it you know, you could it could well be and still using the same strategy that was maybe taught to Sidious by being the background. Because we don't even see it, we just see a hologram. Of it. So, exactly. So see that's what I thought it was for a long time, but I no longer think that's I don't think he's I don't think he's uh um Plagueis anymore. I just think he's gonna end up being like a new character. I think he's gonna be like a brand new character who has got he has got connections, but they're going to be connections that we haven't seen before or we don't know about. Or just something, I think, maybe they'll talk about him in a novel or something like that. But I, I don't think he's going to be anyone we know. I, like I said, I want him to be Plagueis. Right. And I want... Because if, if, if he's Plagueis, it brings it all full circle. Yep. Palpatine's master is now the one terrorizing yep, he's the new exactly he's back in control and stuff like that and it, and, it, and it just brings it back it brings it back i don't want it to be palpatine i don't want it to be palpatine surviving the fall and coming back i would hate that i've heard like some crazy rumors like it's kylo ren from the future and the, uh, listen <laughs> listen crazy we're stuff. getting a bit too star trek you now yeah i don't with that i don't want stuff. i don't want none of that stuff uh i even want it to be a brand new character but if this is the thing, if he's a brand new character, my problem is you can't be this strong and have been just hiding right. when all this stuff was going on. Do you know what I'm saying? That's why I want it to be Plagueis. I want there to be a reason why you were sidelined. And Palpatine sticking a lightsaber through your forehead and you needing 60 years to recover is something I can, I can believe. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, these, they, these are strong force users, so obviously being able to cheat death and all sorts does make sense. The reason why, to be honest, the reason why I have this question is because I don't know myself who I want to be. Now, obviously, you know, having my knowledge around the Sith, it to me has to be someone. And I've even started looking at old comic books, see if I'm picking up a thing or two, you know, because, you know, they tend to do these kinds of things. But I just, don't know where to pinpoint like who would it be you know uh, Darth Plagueis is a great one um, but we don't, we're gonna have to wait we just have to wait man we have to wait um, episode 8 is what a year and a half away a year and a half away need that need that yeah. for sure alright my next question my fourth question is what is your favourite sound in Star Wars now, Star Wars is always known for its great sounds, <laughs> sound quality one. and stuff that's like that. One. So like, what noise do you hear and you're like, Star Wars? Now, what, what noise is that for you? It's, it's, the, it's the lightsabers. It's, 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 it's the lightsabers now. Oh, man, it's just so, mm. Like, I'll tell you, I've had my neighbors knocking, because I had, Star Wars on on home cinema on blast because watching Clone Wars and you know one of my favorite bits from it is um oh what's his name um 
Grievous. Grievous. How did I know that? The force is strong in me. How? Grievous. How? When he just pulls it out. <laughs> that, yo, that does something I dare not say onto the, onto the camera, but it's just, it's amazing. That's that sound. So, um, how did they even come up with that concept? I don't want to know. Lucas needs to know. How did you come up? How did you wake up one day and be like, yo, this is the sound of a lightsaber? This is the sound of a lightsaber. Yeah, that's big. I mean, that is obviously a big iconic one for me. I was stuck in between two because I love the sound of the droids, the droids make, but I also love the TIE Fighters mm. and the X Wings. But I think that yeah. that noise there, that the, the Tie Fighter, it's just it's it's such a different sound. It's not a sound you just hear any like. It's it's a lot like the lightsaber. Like, how did you come up with that? Like, it 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 doesn't even say they're going fast. It says they're going the fastest, <laughs> as fast as possibly can go. Like that's how fast they're going. And, and I love the space battles. I love it. I love just seeing. Why don't we have that in in Battlefront? There's. There's the part in The Force Awakens that I love when Poe is comes to rescue um, Chewie, Han, and Finn, and he just wipes out ten, ten, uh, ten Tie Fighters, and it's just like that's Star Wars. Like that's that is Star Wars, man. I just love that. I love that. So I'm that's my fourth that question. Cool. What have you got? Um. Uh, what fight would you like to see happen? Now this... Toe to toe! <laughs> oh, do you know why this is easy? This is easy and I, I'm going to guess that your answer is going to be the same as mine. Darth Vader versus Star Moore. <laughs> That's the way one. There's, like, right. there's no, like, look. If you, if you watch Clone Wars and Rebels, I, I don't want to, I want to see episode four Vader mm. or episode in between episode three and four Vader that Vader fight Clone Wars more when these two are both at their prime I want to see these two fight each other because ah, for a second I thought that was going to happen I thought it was going to happen in Rebels I as well it was gonna happen. but the reason I want these two to fight is because I don't know who would win. And I know everyone's going to jump in the comments and say, you're crazy, Darth Vader would win and blah, blah, blah. But if, if, you, if you know these two characters, yeah, you know that Vader would have the strength, you know, uh, just the brute strength. He's got that over Maul. But Maul's athleticism, technique... Yeah, agility, fighting ex style. Exactly. Like, these are the things that... That I don't like. I don't know what's gonna what it's gonna come down to. It might come down to something like how how good they are with the force, right? Or something like it, that might be a deciding factor because I don't know if lightsaber to lightsaber that that Vader could take more. Something in me says that maybe it comes down to who who gets like a a, a vital blow, like who takes off whose arm first, or or something like that. But that would be like I that's the, I don't even want to see that fight because it. It, I don't even think it could live up to expectations if I didn't no, see it. No. But that is, that's a battle that that yeah. that'd be tough there. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see those. Um, sorry, um, Kenobi and and more go at each other. Kenobi, and, oh, okay. That's the old. That's except that. Alright, cool. That's big as well. That's big as well. Like, let's see that happen. You know. Um, I don't know, it's just something about it, it's just, how would the fight... It's the history. Well, it's the yeah, history. The history, what, what's happened, obviously even before going into clones all that, like, you know, killing his master and all sorts, like, and really and truly, more lost that fact because he got cocky. You know what I mean? And that was his first, if you look at it throughout the whole movie, he's very patient and he does everything right. The moment he slips up, he gets chopped in half. Like, that was a stupid, quick victory. See, let me, let me jump on, let me jump on that bad wagon. See, after watching Clone Wars 
and, and seeing who Moore is now. I realised that in episode one, Darth Maul's very young. He's very young. He's a very young apprentice. And so is Obi-Wan. Like, they're, to me, they were both in the same phase of their career. Like, he's a paddy one. I'm a new apprentice for, for, um, for Sidious. Sidious. So, the reason I'd like to fight, see them fight now is because they'd both be at that exact same place. Right. I've gone through trials and tribulations. You've done this to me, I've done this to you. This is grown man, we're both 35 years old. Do you know what I'm saying? We're at, this is as strong as we're gonna be. Let's do this, like, yo, let's end this. Like, let's lock ourselves yeah. in this room and know that only one of, only us, one's is, only one of us is coming out of here. And yeah. even the one that's coming out is barely coming out exactly. of here. Exactly. If one of us comes out of here, it's, a, yeah. it's just one. That's it, so. That, that's if, if if there was any way, I would I would want to see Vader, uh, Vader more die would be that way like against that guy. To see, that's the thing. That's see. I feel like the way them two stories are intertwined is that's the only that's, that's the, the only way, way more will go can, can get defeated yeah. for me is that's the only way I think it'd be satisfying is if Obi Wan sticks a lightsaber through him, like. That's it. That's what it's. That's what it's got. It's either that or he gets away, and we just never hear from him ever again. <laughs> but I doubt that's gonna happen because he's on a rampage right now. Super. All right. My last question: What is your favorite Star Wars quote? So, what line in Star Wars <clears throat> do you, is just your favorite, or do you love the most, or which one do you use the most often, like? That's, it's crazy because I tweet every day on the Cyber Nerds account a quote. And when you said that, my mind just went blank, but oh man, I don't know. It's, it's, just, it's just too many. Um, maybe from, from Yoda? I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, oh. I loved you like my brother, like you was meant to be my brother. I think that, because it might be that. It might be when um, Kenobi and Anakin and just that particular line. You were supposed to be my, I loved you. I loved, not love you, loved. Okay. It's over. It's done, like, there's no way I think that might, that might be it. The thing about that moment, I know we've got to talk about that moment again because you just brought it up, is it's crazy because at that point, Anakin, in his head, believes he's dead. Mm. Like, he's, like, Anakin, in his mind, is about to die. He, so he's, he, you can he's see about to die that. and he's, his last words, his last declaration is, I hate you. Like, and you had that look in like, his eye. That, no concern about himself. You're or, burning. Or, 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 or about, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or his, his wife or whatever. He is burning in lava, he's in agonizing pain and, and that's what he musters out of his mouth that he hates Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like, that is some strong stuff right there, I mean. It's a good quote, but I'm gonna have to bring it back, lighten it back up, and uh, mine is uh, don't, big, don't say it. It is a big quote from Han Solo Jesus and Princess Christ. Leia. Mr. Uh, right <laughs> I'm about to throw up on myself right now. <laughs> I don't know why I love this quote, but it's oh, a, I just love it. Where he says I love you, I mean, where she says I love you, and he's like, I know, like that is that is just that sums that sums up those two characters, like. <laughs> It's just like, yo, alright, cool, like, I'm so dismissive, like, yeah, yeah, I know, like, I'm the it's, shit. It's, I Might have to believe I that. I can't believe you just said that. I, it's the, the thing is, yeah, it's just, it's just a, it's a quote that just always comes into my head. Always. Always. Right. Like, I love you. I know. Like, it's just there, like, because I just felt like it was, it's not something that belongs in Star Wars, mm -hmm. but that's what I said, like, that's why I like Han Solo as my non force user because he brings a whole nother level of stuff to Star Wars. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so um, that was that's, it. That's a good question. Because, and this just shows that Star Wars is not just about 
you know, the special effects, you know, the content behind it. There's a lot of good quotes in Star Wars, like deep stuff that you just read, just like, whoa, you know. By the way, um, if you're not familiar with Star Wars quotes, follow us on Twitter. Every day you get a new one, so you don't even need to be looking online. You just get a new one through our feed. Um, plug, plug the Twitter, do that. Good job. Just, that's what I we just, do. Mid podcast, just plug the Twitter. That's, that's it. Cool. Um, is it my turn now? It is your uh, fifth and final question. <sighs> All right. So, um, what game would you want to be released, or what's the next EA game or non EA game? You would want to get released. <sighs> Alright. Ah, good. I'm glad you kind of asked that as a two-part because I know what I want EA to do. Mm-hmm. And I've probably got, I've got like a million ideas for Star Wars games. Mm-hmm. But uh, EA, I'm happy with them bringing out Battlefront 2. But there's got to be some big changes to the game. I mean, I love that game. When you first... The thing about Battlefront is it, sh- it tricks you because it looks and sounds like Star Wars. But... Beneath that, it's just not a very good game. Like, it's good, we all jumped on it, all our cybernets jumped on it, and we played it, and we had fun for hours and hours and hours. But after, like, playing on your own, it's kind of boring. Yeah, see, I can't I can't do those missions, and one of the reasons why I haven't platinumed yet is, is simply because of that. And I've got to wait, I can't, I've tried it, but I just can't just sit there on my own and try to do all these. It's boring to me. That's the thing, and I, and I don't understand why, because, like, most first person shooters, I'm pretty good at first person shooters, so when I usually play them, I bang out a story mode and I just clear the games, it's, right. it's, it's, it's easy, but there's something about Battlefront that when you play on your own, it's just not interesting, just you feel not, like, you feel like alone, and it's just... Like you're forcing like, yeah, to play like, the game. Like just, so that's one thing that's got to change, they've got to address that, I don't know how they do it, but they've got to add a story mode, it's got to be, it doesn't even have to be like a story mode that affects the universe, it can just be, you're a stormtrooper, yeah, you're a stormtrooper or a rebel and you're going to a battle. Ooh, you go to yeah. the Battle of Yavin or you go to the Battle of Jakku or you go to a battle, you you complete your missions, maybe you die at the end. Like, right. you can just be a regular, you know what I'm saying? You can be a regular guy, like, hundreds of characters down Star Wars every day because it's Star Wars, they're at war, so have a throwaway character. Doesn't even, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be, not every story has to be, I saved the galaxy, I right. blew up the Death Star. It can be, I went to work this day, I killed a couple of people and I got and I died after. Let me put a spin on that. Go ahead. Spin away. So you get to create to give um like characteristics to a clone, right? Because you know every clone is different from See, one another. This is So at the beginning You're going in right now. You sort of create your own clone. Yeah. And throughout the missions, so say you're in the Death Star, not Death Star, well, Star Destroyer, mm-hmm. okay, or whatever ship you're in, and you take a, you know, a mission. So go to Fives. Fives, yo, who are you? You're, all right, cool, I've got this for you. And you rank up. That, that, this is, that's amazing, because if you, you watch the Clone Wars, so right. you understand the ranks of it. Right. I can be a star, you know, you come in, you, all the clones look the same, whether it's your first day or your last day. So, you already look the same, you do your little defining features, whether that's add a name, a tattoo on your face, your, or your haircut, stuff like that. And it makes it personal already, because you just create this clone. Right. Then you rank up, because you see yourself go from a, a green soldier all the way up to maybe working with Captain Rex. Woo. Do you know what I'm saying? So we love that, Rex. Rex Shout gets lots Rex. of love. Shout out to Rex. So um, that that's 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 a great idea. Something like that. That's the kind of thing I want to see in Battlefront. They've got a, they've got too much history to be bringing these games out with no story mode. And a couple of weeks ago, it got released it anyway. That they admitted that they just rushed the game out because they wanted it to come out mm-hmm. around the same time as the movie. Which to me is disappointing. I understand it because it's a business, but it's disappointing as a Star Wars fan because I would have given you my money. This is Star Wars. I would have given you my money before what the movie, you doing? after the movie, or whatever. Like you was gonna get my money anyway. So, uh, and then outside of EA, I need, I need a game. I want a bounty hunter game, or like I love. There's there's two games I love, even though one of them's crap. The Force Unleashed. 
Number one, amazing. Number two, not as good as number one, but it's still great. Now, I would love a game like that where I get to play as a force user and I'm going around and I'm doing stuff like that, but I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind a game where I'm not a full shooter, where I'm a bounty hunter, where I'm doing things that have got nothing to do with anything in the movie universes or even the Clone Wars. Maybe it, it maybe one day I see Princess Leia on television in the game, but nothing so in, nothing something nothing so intense. Something that's just its own story where the creators get to really work and do whatever they want to do with the story. I'd I'd love that. That's, I'd love that. Uh, it's see this is why me and you can't really you know talk about it because. The, I'm I'm currently playing Bounty Hunter, uh, so and while I'm playing it, even though it's quite an old game, but if I had a new version of it, you know, with more, you know, where characters get to do a lot more, you know, and and Bounty Hunters tend to be quite agile the way they carry on their missions. Again, you could go with one Bounty Hunter, or I don't know, you have like a sort of like a syndicate of bounty hunters. Listen. And you just go through it like you, today you're this guy to, and you just complete different different missions. Like, I do an open is, world bounty hunting game. Bounty hunting game. Yeah. Come where on. it's got co-op. Where I go, I, co -op. you fly to base and and my bounty hunter is at my base, you come and then we go out and we complete missions together. Jesus. Like these games it's, are out there, I don't I don't know what they're, they're waiting for. I don't know what they're waiting it's, for. It's it's crazy. So um to me, yeah, that would be it. It would be a bounty hunter game. Simply because because I'm playing this one and I just get so many. I was like, it's just, obviously it was so limited, you know, due to technology and the time being that it was developed. And it's, for then, it was a pretty good game. Mm. So imagine now, like, what are you doing? <laughs> can, can we get that, please? All right. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my, my last question. Well, would that Ooh. be the last question? It's coming to the end of the podcast, Raven. So, guys, you've been watching The Sith Temple, episode one. I just want to say thanks for locking in. I'm Joe. And I'm Raven. You can follow us and the rest of the Cyber Nerds at the Cyber Nerds. Where can they follow you, Raven? Uh, you can pick me up on Twitter, CMC underscore GS. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at JICANWIN. With all that being said, guys, may the force be with you. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs> so on Friday, the panel list of Star Wars Celebration Europe um, 2016 come out. If you can't tell, I'm just a little bit overexcited. Um, so, Star Wars Celebration is going to be July 15th to the 17th at Excel 